Programmet presenteras av Betsy.com. This is Marcus Kova with Studio MMA and MMA Nits, and we're here in Las Vegas with the challenger Frank Mir, former champion. How are you feeling? I feel very good. Um, Junior Santos has spoken a little bit more, which he hasn't in the past, about his opponents. Do you feel that it's potentially personal because of what happened in your last fight, or any any reason to why he's talking back a little bit? No, I think he's just trying to evolve his career. I think he's trying to improve. Obviously, he's perfect right now in his uh, his UFC uh, uh, debuts. Um, you know, right now I think he's just trying to uh, get more media attention. You know, sometimes when you're the nice guy. Um, you don't get a lot of uh, uh, coverage, you know, even being the champion. I mean, look at Brock Lesnar. How much media does he get? You know, Dos Santos is much more accomplished as a fighter. But uh, if I were to sell tickets at both sides of town, guess who everybody's going to go see? And so I think he's just trying to improve that aspect of his game. Do you feel that you have that down? Uh, I, I'm very good at it, I think. Uh, I'm able to say things that are truthful and based on reality and facts. And uh, at the same time, uh, you know, not stretch it, you know. Um. What does Junior bring to the to the to the octagon or to the table that other fighters haven't in the past that you've faced? Uh, you know his speed. I think he's one of the quickest guys that are there in the UFC. Uh, one of the fastest champs of all time. And and you've obviously from since you were champ and then the injury and everything else and you come back and and here you are again. Uh, is it a different Frank Mir or is it the same Frank Mir that we've seen really coming back and and sh and having some exceptional finishes in the, in the last few fights. Oh no, I think that uh, you know I'm constantly improving and moving up. Um, you know, my jiu-jitsu is able to submit Noguera, my stand-up is able to knock out Mirko Krokop. I out-wrestled Roy Nelson. Um, I think these are things that show that I'm very well-rounded and capable of doing a lot of things in the octagon. Uh, and very confident as well. Well, you know, I'm confident about what I'm able to do. Yeah. Uh, to say that I'm not nervous or scared or, or have anxiety about facing, a, you know, a fighting. I've been nervous and full of anxiety every fight I've ever been in. Um, I like to find the guy who says he's not nervous. <laughs> you, you need to share me that recipe. It's uh, probably a sociopath, right? Yeah, probably, you're right. Even a sociopath has nervousness. He just doesn't have any uh, empathy towards the inf injuries he inflicts. And since I do have empathy, and I do feel bad about hurting people afterwards, that uh, I guess... You do? Oh, yeah. You know, if I can catch you in a submission and you tap, I'm happy. Um, but I can't control if you decide not to tap. Now, guess what? How stupid would it be if I'm going, well, I had him in an arm bar, but he wouldn't tap, so I let him go, and then he came up and won the fight. That'd be the most moronic. Can you imagine me having to go home and explain that to my wife? Why don't you get a win bonus? Well, he went tap, babe. What was I supposed to do? Well, that's his fault. Let him explain to his wife why he's in the surgical room. You know? <laughs> did you did you know right away when you had the submission that that's, that that was it? He should have tapped. Uh, I knew I had him, so that's why I just kept applying pressure. But if you notice, none of my submissions, I don't try to rip them real fast. Yeah. I'll grab them and I'll jerk it into a position where you can't get out of it. But then once I have it, I mean, if you look at the speed that I'm applying the move, you have plenty of time to tap. I mean, he sat there and probably stomped his feet up and down four or five times. He could have easily just went done. As soon as his hand passed his hip, he should have... He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He was a black belt before I started jiu-jitsu. He knew where he was. Right. He chose not to tap. He made a decision to try to, you know, withstand it. And maybe uh, I decided not to uh, apply pressure. Um, now, when it comes to fighters that have to face you after two broken arms, do you feel that th three? Who's the third one? Roberto Travin, my first fighter, broke his arm. <laughs> How does it feel to break someone's arm? Uh, you know what? Most of the time it happens so quick that there's not really a sensation to it. Uh, it's more of a surprise. Yeah. Um, but do you feel that psychologically that has an effect on, 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 your, on your future opponents? I think it has to. You know, if I was facing somebody like, for example, uh, I think a, another jiu-jitsu guy, uh, Paul Harris, right? Yeah. Um, even rolling with him, I would think, like, when you bring him up, if he came in the gym, I'd be nervous. Oh, man, if I, this guy catches me in something, I tap, you know, I'm going to tap fast. If he even looks at my arm, <laughs> oh, done, you know, because I've seen him hurt people. You know, it, it can happen. Uh, so, I mean, in turn, if I was an opponent preparing for me and I'm looking at it, I go, man, you know, this guy, that hasn't just happened once. Once can be a fluke or just it happens, but it's happened multiple times uh, where I've seen him crank someone's joint in a way that, you know, didn't come back to true yet. And so you, I, I think it gives me an advantage that people should try to tap quicker, you know, and maybe if I don't have a submission locked on right off the bat, they maybe go ahead and say they're, they quit beforehand. And if they don't, you know what I mean? That's their fault. They watch the video. Yeah, no one to blame. It wasn't like, well, I didn't see that one coming. Really? You're like the fourth guy he's done that to. 
So a little bit of the Tyson syndrome, but with submissions? I think so. I think that's a good analogy. Uh, you know, Tyson, I think everybody, it was already that, you know, uh, perception, you know, of what was going to have happened when you faced him. I think with me, I, I, it makes things harder and easier. Easier in the sense that, you know, no one's going to want to, you know, they're going to uh, respect what I can do. But sometimes it makes it more difficult because now the minute I grab their wrist, they jump up and run away. <laughs> no way! You know, so that makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, you've been a champion. You've been in the spotlight many times before. But is this... The media is getting more and more. Uh, and uh, How is it to be right next to the guy you're going to be inside of the cage with on Saturday? Does it affect you at all? No, not at all. Um, you know, he's a man, I'm a man, we're going to fight each other. Uh, it's business, you know, just like a football game, you know, a soccer game. Um, Saturday night, obviously, you know, when we see each other, it's going to be time to, to play. Uh, but right now, you know, it's not personal, I guess. It's a business. You know what I mean? I want to go out there and prove, you know, and fight and have a good training day, you know, and, and, and prepare and do well. He wants to do the same. And then when it's over with, win or lose, it's over with. Uh, Junior predicted a knockout in the second round. Any predictions from you? Uh, submission second round. I like that one. Okay. Oh, hopefully me submitting him. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't. I'm sorry, Junior. I don't think I'll knock you out in the second round. You're pretty quick. Frank Mayer for UFC 146 for the title on Saturday night. Thank you, Frank. No problem. Thanks, man. Oh my God. Programmet presenteras av betsafe.com.